Hi there. Now for this question, we're told that in a manufacturing process, 25% of articles are thought to be defective and articles are produced in batches of 20. And for this part, a batch is selected at random. Using a 5% significance level, find the critical region for a two-tailed test that the probability of an article chosen at random being defective is 0.25. And you should state the probability in each tail, which should be as close as possible to 0.025. And this was worth five marks. Now, if you'd like to have a go at this question, haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, I'm going to run through this very slowly. So you might want to just fast forward and uh, just check your work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now I did say I'm going to take you slowly through this. I'm going to put, most probably put more steps in than you need to. It's just so that hopefully you get an idea of what's involved. Well, first of all, I'm going to need to define a random variable. So I'm going to say let x be that random variable. So we'll have let x be the random variable. And I'll just write RV for short. And that random variable is going to be the number of defective articles that we get. So we'll just put that here as the number of defective articles. And because we've got a discrete random variable here, that an article will either be defective or not defective, and there's a finite number of trials, we're looking at 20 here, what we've got is a binomial distribution. So I'm going to say where x is distributed binomially, and there'll be two parameters, n and p. n, the number of trials, is 20, and p, I'm just going to leave as p. Because being a hypothesis test, I'm going to have the null hypothesis, and that's going to be that p is equal to 25%. Well, as a decimal, that's going to be 0.25. And the alternative hypothesis, H1 there, is going to be, because it's going to be a two-tailed test here, then P would be not equal to 0.25. OK? And the significance level is denoted by alpha, and it's going to be 5%. We'll be looking at 2.5% in each tail, hence 0.025. Now, because we're being asked to work out a critical region, I'm going to have two values, two critical values. I'm going to let the lower critical value be RL, and the upper critical value be RH, OK? So we'll say let RL and RH be the critical values. OK, so just put that in there. Hopefully you can see that. So what we've got then is essentially this. Imagine we've got, say, all the different outcomes that we can have of defective articles. They can range from either no defective articles all the way up to 20 defective articles. And if we know that 25% of the articles are thought to be defective, then there's going to be 25% of 20, quarter 20 is 5, so somewhere around about the 5 mark we can expect fluctuations to occur. So there's going to be a value, which we'll call RL, okay, the lower critical value, that if you go below this, there's a 2.5% chance of being lower than RL. And we'll pick a higher critical value, which we've called RH. And if you go above this, there's about a 2.5% probability of being greater than this value. Remember, these will only be approximate 
probabilities because we're looking to be as close as possible to this 2.5%, 0.025. So let's start by looking at this lower critical value, RL, first of all. Now, what I'm going to say is that we would reject the null hypothesis, okay, if the probability of the number of defective articles represented by the random variable x here being less than or equal to this lower critical value, RL, okay, given that the null hypothesis is true, in other words, that p equals 0.25, is roughly around 0.025. We've got to look for a value close to that. And to do this, what we need to do is call on a set of tables. Now, I've got an extract from a commutative set of probability tables where we get the value of p being equal to 0.25 would look for the number of trials n being 20 and each of these values when x is 0, 1, 2 and so on give us the probability of being less than or equal to that value. So we're looking for a value close to 0 0.025. And you can see from these tables that it's got to be this value when p equals 1. It's 0 0.0243. It's less than 0 0.025. But if I took this value when x equals 2, 0 0.0913, although it's greater than 0 0.025, it's certainly further away than this value is here. So for this example, we can see that from tables, x has to be equal to 1. In other words, this lower critical value is 1. So let's just put that down here, that from tables, okay, since the probability of x being less than or equal to 1 given the null hypothesis is true, in other words, that p equals 0.025, that equals 0.0243. And so the lower critical value, RL, must be equal to 1. And as for that probability, which we're asked to state, it would be 0.0243. Now, to get the upper critical value, what we would be doing is rejecting the null hypothesis. So we just put this down. Reject the null hypothesis if the probability of x being greater than or equal to the upper critical value, Rh, given that the null hypothesis is true, in other words, p equals 0 0.25, is also as close as possible to 0.025. Now if we start to look further down the tables, and I've copied out the last part of the tables that concern us, if I was to experiment by, say, working out various probabilities, and I'm going to look at working out the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10, say, given that the null hypothesis is true. Okay. Now, if you had to work out the probability x is greater than or equal to 10, it would be 1 minus the probability that x was less than or equal to 9. And using the tables here, I can see the probability of being less than or equal to 9 is 0.9861. So if I did 1 minus 0.9861, what I get is 0 0.0139. And I can see this value is below, just below 0 0.025. If I was to experiment and say take the probability that x is greater than or equal to 9 by doing 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 8, 
in other words 1 minus 0 0.9591 we end up with 0 0.0409 for just over 4 percent and so clearly this result here is closer to the two and a half percent 0 0.025 so we can see that therefore the critical region Okay, let's just summarize now. The critical region is going to be where x is less than or equal to 1. That's lower than this lower critical value. Or x is greater than or equal to 10. That's the upper critical value. But also less than or equal to 20. So, quite long, I've put a lot more detail in it, but uh, that's essentially the method we would use to work out those critical regions. So I hope that's been of some use to you, and thanks for listening.